So you're guaranteeing $170 million a year on a $3 million budget. Well, now Mr. Burns has handed out our, our uh, numbers tonight, and uh, we've had an increase in delinquencies, right? Our total tax on the outstanding tax receivables last year, as of November 30th, were $2.7 million. They've gone up by a million bucks, $3.7 million. 3.7, our budget's 3 million. Now, people are asking me, why did you have to borrow money in October to pay the county? Well, you have it right there. You had a million dollar increase in receivables. The good news is we'll get these back. Mr. Town Attorney Note has done a fantastic job in reclaiming these monies. But what it presents is a cash flow problem, a real cash flow problem that we're going to have to address every year. And we need to come up with a solution for that. And finally, then, what are the solutions? Ultimately, we have, a, in my view, an incoherent government. And I think we have three possible solutions. One is town dissolution. Something we've talked about a lot, and, 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 and I think we want to talk about personally, at least I do, going into the new year. I think we can continue to save money if we think about outsourcing services, um, uh, preserving our town employees, our terrific town employees, but thinking about outsourcing some of our services, or we can raise taxes. You know, we've cut taxes 67%, but you know, if, if, if we think, you know what, those fundamental structural reforms are, are, are unpalatable, don't really want to do them, then we can raise taxes. So I, I just don't see, you know, when I look at these five-year projections, and they're important, what you can see is that beautiful fund balance that we built up to invest in our parks comes down, comes down rapidly. So we, we need to keep our eye on the, uh, on the ball, and, and, and ultimately, I think we need to, unfortunately, or fortunately, continue to, with our restructure of the town of Rye, and certainly that will be one of my goals as we head into 2015. Um, okay, now, um, I, I want, I, unfortunately, I have to, I apologize, I mentioned to town, Deputy Supervisor, well, no, I'm going to have to leave in about 10, 15 minutes. He said he'd take over the meeting. Um, in terms of the, what, there's Rye Town merger form, this, uh, Town Assessor Canower, that's just, it's a simply a form that we're approving? The interim municipal agreement, or the what's lot, the, what's the, the lot, what's the Rye Town merger form? Merge. Yeah. What is that? Um, well, I wanted to propose it so you could evaluate it, and um, basically it's something I'd like to use, but the thing is you would have to agree if you wanted to charge a fee to anybody who would like to merge or split a lot. Okay, it's so just, I, I, I'm just trying to, so could you, let's go start then with the presentation on Ride Neck. Okay. Again, I sent an email to the board, hopefully you will have seen. Uh, you just want to sort of update us on where things stand with the Village of Ride right back and the elimination of the property assessment function? Um, yes. Um, we were informed as of the last board meeting that the village of Mamaronek no longer exists as an assessing unit. Um, we, the town of Rye, the town of Mamaronek, and the village of Mamaronek had a meeting last week. It was called um, by the people at ORPS so that we were all on the same page as to what has to happen in the prescribed time frame. And um, at that meeting, ORPS indicated that the town roles will govern. So if the village of Mamaronek does nothing to reconcile the parcels, our roles will govern and there would be nothing we'd have to do. Um, the, the one thing that we will have to do is do some coding in our RPS database so that we'll pick up the village portion of the exemptions. Um, but the greatest unknown is what will happen with this parcel reconciliation. The yeah, village... Just, maybe just worth explaining. So, well, first of all, it's wonderful news that WORPS is going to recognize that our, our role rules regardless. Right. And that gives us great comfort, and I'm glad that came out of the Thursday meeting. Uh, now, in terms of the parcel reconciliation, my understanding, and again, the board, I think, got an email to this in this regard, uh, there's about 230 
properties in the Rhinex section that where the Village of Mamaroneck assessment role is different than the Town and Rye assessment role. Correct. And they need to be reconciled in some fashion. Correct. And I, as I understand it, the other good news that came out of the meeting is that the Village of Mamaroneck will take do the work to figure out which ones are right and which ones are wrong. Correct. And at some point then, so that's all terrific news. At some point in time though, it, I expect they will come to us and say we need to fix the role. Correct. And in talking with you yesterday, uh, I think we spoke, you mentioned that when you uh, changed 12 parcels um, last year, it was four days of work? Approximately, right. Approximately four days of work. So if they were to come back with, there's 200 that are wrong, if 50 of a percent of them, you know. They're not necessarily wrong. They're well, so different. Well, different, different, they're different. Different. Okay. Different. So my question is, if you were forced to reconcile 100 parcels in the middle of your busy assessment year, how would that impact your workflow? It could be a bit problematic okay. if it all comes at once. I mean, either they would have to understand we may have to spread it out over time, or um, it could be problematic. Okay. And, and I just wanted to make clear to the board that, in fact, that could be problematic, and I want to anticipate. I, I have to say, uh, I'm disappointed the Village of Marinick did not reach out, at least any of the elected officials that I'm aware of, to let us know they were going to vote on this. Uh, they, they reached out a year ago, and we, we indicated we're fully supportive, and, and quite frankly, I'm fully supportive of the change. But I would have expected that when they were going to vote this in October, somebody would have contacted the elected officials here in the town of Rye and say, hey, we've done it, and this may impact your workload in some fashion. Can you work with us? Unfortunately, that call only took place last Saturday. Um, so I'd like to get out ahead of this, in front of it now, um, and, and, and I'd just like to go on record saying if they come with a significant workload that potentially is disruptive to our workflow, I think we're going to need to reach out to the Village of Maranek to get them to help us, one, support what we're doing and, and maybe potentially pick up some of the costs of the added time if we're going to need it. But I don't know what the rest of the board thinks in that regard. Uh, I, I, I appreciate, you know, the... Uh the understanding that there may be additional work, but the understanding and that the board and the public needs to know is that the village of Amaranik has a planner that has agreed to go over the section block and lot. Um, we have yet to discuss with the village of Amaranik the opportunity to have an employee, maybe this gentleman, come and do some work uh, to reconcile, because this is all, the, this entire burden for, with the section block and lot uh, the data that has to be corrected or updated uh, or married into the town of Rye's data, uh, that burden right now is on the village of Amaranek. And that was clear from our meeting. That's correct. So it is important that we understand that that's the, fa that's the fact. And we should communicate in that fashion and not wait until we say, oh, it's, it's busy now. We're not busy now. Let's get it done now, and let's call the village of Mamaronic now, and get and get them get them on board with it. So well, we well, don't we don't wait until we say it's busy. Let's start working on this now. That's the way I, I see it. And if there is uh, additional work, I still believe that the municipalities taking the opportunity to remove uh, a, a level uh, a, a department. So this is let's just. Let's all keep in mind, too, is that the town of Rye is not just Porchester, Rybrook, okay? Uh, the town of Rye is Porchester, Rybrook, and Rye Neck, okay, which is Mamaronek. And so now we're, we're, we're paying some special attention to Mamaronek, and I think it's great. Um, but this is a decision that benefits our constituents in, in, uh, in Rye Neck, the town of Rye constituents, where they're not paying additional costs, at least I should hope that they're not, we'll make sure we'll check with the board over there in Mamaronek, they're not paying additional co costs to support another department or a redundant department that was there. And obviously it's redundant because they've eliminated it, they don't need it. And, and as uh, uh, the assessor Knauer said, uh, our role rules. And I think that that's uh, very important. And I think this is definitely something that we can work through. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, a negative. I want everybody to remain positive about this and if we keep that positive atmosphere going where we're controlling the process, it, the negatives will be, uh, be mitigated. So.
Uh, well, I, I think the benefits will accrue to the uh, you know uh, residents of the town of Rye. I think it's all very good. I think it's great that they're reducing another layer of government. It's all for the benefit of the taxpayers of this community. However, I, w I was just trying to understand based upon what Ms. Knauer just uh, mentioned. Um, you, you mentioned that you know they would reconcile their records with our records, but ORPS has decided that our records are the official records at this point in time in terms of the assessed value. Is that correct? Correct. And the parcel IDs and the addresses. Right. And so what discrepancies might they find? Well, they're looking I'm, I'm to trying to understand. They're what looking to preserve development rights and land use so that somebody who's been approved for four lots and may want to do something with it. And, or two lots, let's say, and we have it as one, that will be a problem if they want to develop that. So at some point in time, they're going to have to come to us and say, we need to split this. And splitting a parcel isn't just you know, writing something down on a piece of paper. You have to contact the mapping company. They have to read the deeds. They have to, we have to make sure the ownership is legal. So there's quite a few pieces that go into it. If it crosses uh, okay, taxing so jurisdictions, special districts, that kind of thing. I can understand that. With that, is there anything else that that might need to be reconciled? Um, the other, the other uh, my advantage to this is that part of this is that the other important aspect of this, Bob, is that the the village of Mamaroneck is going to maintain and retain the responsibility uh, of uh, collecting the taxes and sending out their tax bills. So when uh, Denise's department is done with the tax roll and it's ready for those bills to go out, uh, that has to be given to the Village of Mamaroneck. The Village of Mamaroneck acts on it. So if the data is the same, the Village of Mamaroneck has the same data. Right next, the Village of Mamaroneck has the same data as the Town so of Rye. Have to match That's the lots important. And Correct. Lots, it's important et for them. Yeah. Yeah. No, and and at the moment, they don't have the same parcel IDs that we do. They're using the, our old parcel IDs, but those old parcel IDs don't necessarily match up one to one. And if you go on the first page of our role for Village of Mamaroneck and the first page of their role, the first parcel you see, as John Wallen from Orps pointed out, doesn't match up. It has okay. the old section block. Now is that lot. old properties or is that the 230 we were talking about before? Um, presumably it's the 10% that Greg Cutler, their planner, identified. Okay. The rest he apparently could match up through a GIS function, which took it to another level than last year because I tried to do this last year when we were going through the SCAR process because I wanted to see okay, this is where our assessment's at, what's the village equalized assessment and how right. far off we are. And I went and met with them and asked them, can we do a parcel to parcel match? And they said that their IT gentleman said that he can get about 60% of them to match up using Excel and whatnot. And I didn't have enough time to take it any further and it, it really wasn't something I could reconcile at that point. So um, Greg appears to have applied the additional okay. GIS technology to resolve that. And, and this is a one-time change? It wouldn't be a recurring event? In yeah. To make so, this yeah. Once you get over this initial hurdle, right. things yeah. should go rather smoothly. Okay. And is this something that, um, you know, I, I, I understand that you know, now that I have a better understanding of what's involved, it may require some additional workload, especially when you're trying to reconcile some of these parcels. Is this something that um, you know, Board of Assessment Review could potentially take control of? or No. In terms of no, no. nothing that they would have? Yeah. All right. It might, might require some additional Yeah, look, I'll, the only, my, I, again, just to be clear, I think it makes infinite sense to do what they're doing. Well, and the other thing is maybe they could consider using a company like GAR, right. who did the um, Town of Maranek uh, reassessment, maybe they can utilize their services to help because they, they understand the tax mapping and all of that. And uh, the Town of Maranek may need GAR's services to do some valuation if, in fact, the village is going to follow through on a homestead, non-homestead tax shift analysis because actually there's more work on the Town of Maranek's part than our part because we have all of our parcels already classified, homestead, non-homestead. We have our condos at market rate, those that can be at market rate. So we're kind of sitting in a good position as opposed to the town of Mamaroneck that would really have to do some more work if, if the village is going to take it to the next level to uh, decide if they're going to go with the homestead option. 
And, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head, Councilman Neoris. I mean, you've been through these transitions. It's a transition phase. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've never seen a transition go, you know, smoothly. And I don't expect this one to go without hiccups. It's, it's, it's a fairly complicated transition. I guess that's the first point. Um, and, and I'm fully supportive of the change, but I'm just very cautious that, you know, our workload be increased as a result of a decision made by the Village of Maranek, I guess the first point. The second point is, just so everybody's aware, our assessment department, and you saw in the budget, we've increased our assessment uh, expenditures this year 8% to support the wonderful work that Town Assessor Knauer is doing. And what she's done is she's brought in Income Works and she's brought in GAR so we can bring in-house and improve our capability. Now, so that's a terrifically difficult challenge she has this year. We added an additional half person uh, also. So given her workload, and if, if she puts her shoulder to the wheel along with her uh, town assessment staff, she's hopeful that we'll be able to reduce expenditures next year, given, having made the investment this year. But that's going to require a, you know, a terrific lot of work on their part. So I'm particularly concerned about any distraction because it just comes at a bad time. And so I just wanted to make the board aware of, what, of potential distraction. I completely agree with you, Deputy Supervisor. Well, it's important to control the process. And I want to make sure that we're doing just that. And, and now, um, in 2016, do we have to do a um, townwide reassessment? It's an option. We'll have to, we'll have to, de we'll have to decide. We, or we are not under it's any... It's like every six years. Well, we're right? not any, under any kind of cyclical plan at the moment. The funds for um, supporting that from the Office of Real Property Services have, has dried up. Okay. So um, basically, we can set that reassessment plan uh, an, the initial year at any point in time now. Okay. So we would have to decide when we need to do that. But that could be a major undertaking. Wonderful. Any further questions for Town Assessor Knauer? We need to plan that out. Yep. No, we definitely need to plan yeah. that out. So a big year again. Uh, I'm just going to stay for one more item, and then I'm going to head out and wish everybody a happy holiday season. Uh, dates and locations for January February meetings. Um, talking about Rydneck, I, I think we ought to go to Rydneck. Um, we, we, I think if we can, I think they've reserved space available for us on our dates, correct, Bishop? Yes. Well, let's go to Rydneck. Okay. We'll kick off the year in Rhineck. I think you're absolutely right, Deputy Supervisor Villanova. We don't want to forget our, our friends in Rhineck. And so unless the board, I mean, the board's happy to do it, I'd love to have our first two meetings in Rhineck given the complications here. Well, we have the first meeting in Rhineck, and the, uh, that's J January, and the February meeting is in Rybrook. Is that correct, Bishop? Uh, yes, we have, well, the, we have the, yeah, the option. Both of them are holding right, the so dates for us. So right, January 20th is the January meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Supervisor of May, historically, you are third Tuesday of February. You're often away. Yep. That's a school break. Right. So that would be the 17th. So the board should vote to change that to another night, either the, the 10th or the Well, 10th. I may be away. If the board's here, I'm happy to keep the meeting. If okay, the well, board I'll be away as well that week. Just so Okay. It's worth not that you need me to be here, but it's well, I, if you want, it, uh, I'm, uh, depending on what the board wants to do. Have it when you're not here. I, don't know I think they may very well. I think they may very well. No, I just I understand. No, no, I think. I think it's uh, here's the other thing too, uh, Mr. Noto. In, uh, in your absence, uh, I would expect that the assistant uh, I could have Martha. attorney, yeah, sure, Martha, should yeah. be here. Right. If, if you want her here, sure. Well, I'm happy to leave it the way it is because we, then we can decide in January okay. if we want to change it. Yeah. It's up to, up that's to a, the... That's yep. a good idea. Let's, All right. Let's, let's okay. kick off January. So, but we are on for January 20th. At Rydneck. I'm happy to do both in Rydneck. Do you want to do one at Rybrook? I think we should split up. I think yep. we should do one in one. Yeah. I know okay. For the years I've sat on the board, we've, we've never gone been to Rydneck yeah. right. once a year, but I've yet to go to Rybrook. Go to Rybrook. Nora, yeah, I think that'll so. be a first for us. Mm -hmm. Good. Rybrook, here we come. I know right. we'll have to, I'm not sure if they're going to hold it. Right neck, you mean? No, no, right January 20th is right neck. Right neck, okay. And then the February meeting will be in Rye Brook. Right. Didn't at they at hold date, that? At a they date to be determined. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, wait, they didn't oh, hold the date for us? A, they're holding the 17th, but if you're going to change that date. Well, that well no, we're going to we're going to do that. We're going to, if we change it, we'll have to figure something else okay. out. Okay. So they're holding the 17th for us. Right. Yeah. I'll make the okay. call to see what. If All right, so we'll, so, but. Right now, the January meeting will be held in Rye Neck on January 20th, mm -hmm. and the February meeting will be held on February 17th in Rye Brook. Very Beautiful. Good. Well, listen, so I want to. We oh. have a motion for that, right? 
Yes. I got a motion yeah. to approve the, those dates and places. So moved. Can I second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's my official, last official act of 2014. I'd like <laughs> to take this opportunity to thank, oh, first of all, to invite to the town board. We have a, a Christmas lunch Thursday. Yes, Thursday. So okay. please, like, hopefully we'll love to have everybody there. I want to use that, use that up, right speed with hope. <laughs> I want to uh, start by thanking the town staff for all their hard work. We want to uh, basically thank them with this uh, lunch. They've been tremendously supportive throughout particularly through a difficult move, so we're looking forward to celebrating the holiday season. Uh, all of the, the town staff, that is, including uh, the people who are not full-time, uh, well, Mr. Nowotnik, Mr. Noto, Mr. Burns, Mr. Terenzi, uh, Mr. DiCrincenzo. Uh, we, all, we talked about the top two state, uh, our, our secret weapons, uh, the Honorable Mr. Mecca, our receiver of taxes, uh, town controller um, Vespia, and now Town Assessor Knauer is, is, is following uh, in, in that mode. And I want to thank the Town Board uh, for the, 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 the fair-minded uh, conversations and, and thoughts. I think the, the prayer at the beginning of the meetings is very helpful, and, and I think it, it keeps everything even-handed. So have a happy holiday. Hopefully I'll see everybody on Thursday. If not, Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank, thank you, you, Supervisor thank Carvin. You. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Got to get that kiss in there. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, approval of minutes. Uh, we have uh, October 21st, November 10th, and November 25th. Does anybody have any questions on those uh, minutes? No. Then uh, can we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do have a second? A second. Oh, please call the roll. Collins? Yes. Nardi? Yes. Myers? Aye, for the 25th of November. Okay. Villanova? Yes. Okay. They okay. passed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Comments from the public? Well, moving along. Very good. Okay. And we'll move into uh, the uh, discussion on the intermunicipal agreement for transfer of assessment. Uh, Assessor Knauer, if you want to uh, lead us in that discussion. Um, okay. I gave you a draft of an intermunicipal agreement and um, if you could consider it and let me know your thoughts, then I would approach, I would assume the town of Mamaroneck would probably be the most logical uh, reciprocal town to work with. And um, if they agree, then I can come back with a resolution and uh, seek your approval on that. Okay, so uh, just the highlights and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if, if in the, this is not something that uh, is, stands and that we need to use, uh, it's an option, it's a relief valve if uh, we see that there is a uh, strong uh, conflict of interest uh, for an applicant, uh, someone who's grieving their taxes, in front of the uh, Board of Assessment Review. And uh, we, we, we clearly see that we can't get uh, beyond that uh, conflict of interest, uh, that we have an opportunity to send that, uh, that person who's grieving their taxes to uh, another town, in this case uh, the town of Mamaronek, uh, who handles a similar process. Uh, the most important thing is that they're looking at data, and um, the data is unbiased a, opinion. Un, it's an unbiased opinion, <laughs> correct? So they're looking at data. Uh, they're going to look at the uh, the presentation from the person who's grieving the taxes, and uh, they'll make a, a fair-minded decision. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, it would be great if uh, you know it's uh, that uh, it's a great opportunity. So uh, I guess we'll leave this alone, and we'll uh, we'll put this on the agenda. If you can make this as as a resolution. Okay. Uh, for the uh, January meeting. And will do. And uh, any questions, comments from the board? Uh, I think, once again, it's a great idea, and Thank you're you. just always so good at looking into all different avenues that we should be pursuing to ensure we're doing everything best practice, and this is just another case of that. So thank you. Thank you, Christina. Okay. And uh, Denise, uh, I guess we can continue talking on the Rytown merger form. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this was a form that the um, city of New Rochelle was using, and when I was in Peekskill and they were looking to generate additional funds, I said, well, we can start charging for anybody who's requ requesting a split merge. Um, but more importantly than the fee, which is something you would have to decide on, is for us as a department to track and have a history of what it was that generated the split and the merge so that we would have a, 
a record that we can attach to the file, signed by the owner, and the owner is basically representing, uh, we could strengthen the legal um, verbiage a little bit, but they're basically representing they do own the property and they're going to hold the town harmless should any unusual circumstance arise from possibly a dispute or anything related to that. But most importantly is to document it and to have every department on the same page agreeing to such a split or a merge. Okay. Uh, Town Assessor Knauer, I think that this is uh, another great opportunity for us to uh, enhance uh, the, uh, the process and, and uh, stay ahead of certain things. Uh, the one thing that I'd like to see, and I think the board would as well, uh, would be uh, to see what, a histor what the historic is in the town of Rye mm -hmm. and how many of these uh, come across uh, your desk uh, you know, every year. I know that uh, you know, there are a lot of fees that are charged uh, in the municipalities that have the actual building departments. Uh, unlike uh, unlike uh, New Rochelle or Peekskill, um, the town of Rye does not have a building department. Uh, so uh, to, you know, to charge the fee, I feel uh, you know, the, the people that are, are doing the, the work are already paying the fees to the villages. Um, and if this is a, a one-off or maybe a two-off or a five-off, I don't know if uh, that extra $500 proposed for the year is worth, uh, you know, collecting it. Uh, it may just be worth just having better data. Understood. Uh, and again, and, you yeah. know, just really to get everybody to agree that this is what we should do, you know. Do you know offhand? Have you... Stop well, to look back and see the Last year was about a dozen. Okay. Yeah. A question. I'm just curious. I, I see that this is specific to Port Chester, not Rye Brook, not. Did I? Uh, that's the way the wording seems to read. Yeah. All <clears throat> oh, right. So I Perhaps we need harmless to and indemnify a town. Oh, of Rye. okay. Perhaps yes. We need to and and list all the villages. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, the, the, the policy decision is to you charge the hundred dollars. That's what that would. Yeah. You don't need a resolution for her to use the form. You need the resolution to charge the hundred dollars, which is that's the, the issue correct. Because yeah. we, we we encourage the the assessor to uh, work autonomously and, and collect the best data she can. Right. So I think and we wanted to said, make money too for the, said, <laughs> for the town, not, not <laughs> yourself. And I think so. It's important. It's a felony. <laughs> no. It's and, and, important and, to collect the data, <laughs> but uh, I think that we should think of uh, get the historic, and if it's you know 10, 12 a year, we need to take that under consideration next month. How how does the oh. village of Rye Neck and and the reconciliation of the parcels come into play here? That I yes, don't know. Yeah. That would have yes. to be determined um, that may be a little bit different if it's not the owner themselves requesting this. I don't know. That would be something we'd have to discuss. Uh, Ms. Knauer, this is just for, for the owner for um, supporting a, a split or a subdivision and or a merger of Correct. Lots. Okay. And I mean, by charging a fee, you, it would also um, keep people who were capriciously wanting to do this to just request it. That would be the How, how are we currently made aware of these? Um, generally, the owner comes in and talks to us about it. So, you know, there's one on the on the plate right now where it's he's they're saying that it was two lots. We have it as one. Now we have to look at deeds and determine well how far back does this go and was there a legal issue that caused them to um, take the two lots, make them one, and what would be the reasoning why we would make it two lots so are, again? Are we now? getting any any input from um, any of the villages within the town of Rye with regards to any of these decisions being made, uh, splitting or subdivision? Well, in that measures. particular case, I believe we're going to instruct the owner that if he, can get, if he can get the village to approve it, then we can move forward with it. But we're just not going to do it on our own without all having the same understanding that this is okay to move forward. Right. A lot of times uh, this will come up when uh, through development. Uh, people want to develop their property and or uh, you know right. understood they, uh, well, well that that just begs the question um, You know we should look to get some regular input from some of the building departments in the Absolutely. community on any changes mm -hmm. or, or permits that are going on in order to provide a better assessment for those homes. Right, and that's exactly why I would want the sign-offs on the document so Right. It's not, it's, it's not only in the merger. I mean, I would like to see this expanded to any sort of renovation that's going on within homes within the community as well. I know a number of homes are, are, are making re renovations in, in where in the area that I live in Rybrook, and um, 
I don't know if they filed with the village of Rybrook. I assume they have. But, you know, are we aware that they've made changes to their home? Yes. In, tho in, in those instances, the village provides they us provide with us. building okay. permits, and then we take it from there. Okay. But the starting point in that case is the, the village, village notifying us. Okay. Excellent. Um, so, but they don't notify you in terms of mergers, just in terms of? Most likely it's the owner coming to us to really? discuss it first. I thought, okay. I thought the village would have. I'll say to go to the town first before they go to the village. That I don't know who they come to first. How will, how will it affect my taxes? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm against the fee because it's like every time you turn around, you got to pull a permit and everything else, you're getting hit for all, all the fees. You gotta give, you know, you gotta give them a break a little bit. That's fine. That would be you know? your choice. I just threw it out there just for discussion. <laughs> Any additional uh, questions or comments regarding the town merger form? No. Okay, very good. We'll move on to uh, the assessor reports. Any, anything additional? That just about covers it. <laughs> I think so. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, the finance uh, department. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dave Burns. Thank you, uh, Sam Terenzi, for uh, preparing the budget along with uh, Bishop Nowatnik. Uh, you've done a, a great job. And, uh, I'll reserve my comments at the end of the meeting. Uh, the uh, tax receiver, Honorable Mr. Mecca, good to see you. Honorable Deputy Villanova and members of the Town Council, good evening. Nick Mecca, 45 Alto Avenue, Port Chester, New York. I would just, a couple of points I would like to bring to the public and to people here this evening. If you haven't paid your village tax yet, the month is moving on very quickly, and right now, we still have over $6 million outstanding in village taxes. So please make an extended effort to get the money in. Secondly, I would say almost one out of two, every one of a person comes in and is not aware that we have moved. They said we went to 10 Pearl Street and, and with no one there, so we had to come over here. For every tax, for every function of the town business, folks, you must come to 222 Grace Church Street, the Village of Port Chester Municipal Building on the third floor. And my last point, if anybody wants to pay the second installment of their school tax, which is really not due till January so that they can get the um, federal exemption, the, the reminders will go out next week, but if you need to Excuse me, you need to know, just call the office and we'll give you the amount, okay? And with that, I wish everybody a very happy holidays and happy Hanukkah. Okay, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Town Clerk. I submitted my report, but I, um, I, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, um, happy Hanukkah, and <laughs> we're celebrating our office all the holidays and um, season's greetings to everyone. Thank you, folks. <laughs> Town Attorney Noto. Uh, thank you, Deputy Supervisor. I do need a brief executive session with the board to discuss a contract negotiation on town-owned property. Uh, the class of uh, uh, 14 in REMS uh, have actually, we've had a lot of activity this month. Um, many have paid uh, full or partial, and that looks like most will have paid either by the end of the month or by the middle of next month, so we're actually in pretty good shape. Looks like four or five properties are still uh, problematic, but um, it, it, we had a slow start, but this month it's picked up dramatically. And I think Nick's happy about that. <laughs> so, um, you know, we will uh, we will continue to keep an eye on it for you, and I'll, I'll report in. But I do need an executive session, and of course, Thank happy you. holidays to everybody. Superintendent of Highways. Good evening. Has uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, have you looked at the report? Yes. Uh, do we know when uh, uh, they're going to retrofit the uh, railings on the bridge? Do we have a date? Uh, at this point, we have no date. Uh, Deb, uh, Cells and the Village of Amaranic and Arbon are still uh, doing some kind of design to do the retrofitting. It has to be redesigned so it can apply, be reapplied to the existing railing or a whole new railing being put on. Uh, Cells, who's the uh, engineer... Uh, on the project hasn't come up with a new design yet. 
Okay. This has been uh, what's going on now. Uh, yeah, since uh, more than a, more than a handful of months. Yes, but they did do the uh, the additional uh, epoxy uh, coating, so the uh, concrete on the deck is uh, stronger and uh, will withstand the weather much better. Very good. Does anybody else have any questions or comments on this? Did you did we talk about this before I got here? I'm going to assume not. This, oh, John, this wait, packet wait. here? Yeah, that's the packet. That's the uh, scope of uh, the, the work on the Otter Creek Bridge yeah. that you requested. It's, it's interesting. Um, you see all the pictures? I mean, it, yeah. it, it needs to be yeah. done. Yeah. But we just have to find a, a, a method in which to do it where it can be done at a reasonable cost to the town of Rye because the, the proposals we got were, you know, quarter million dollars to paint, uh, you know, f a few steel beams and uh, closure plates is just, just ridiculous. I mean, it's very interesting. I, I, I'm very happy, of course, to see thinking out of the box, to look yeah. for solutions. It's great that they're trying to work with us and look for these solutions with us. I've always wanted to explore the idea of um, capitalizing on a volunteer effort for, I suggested it maybe for Crawford Park one time or things like that. I don't know that this is the right project for it. It could be, you well, know. Well, it was one suggestion that I, they, you know, we, I think we came it's a up great with that they at least are thinking like that. Um, we could talk about it more, but definitely worth mentioning. Yeah. But we are going to sit. I'm going to sit down with uh, Autumn and Kirby and see what else we can come up with. You know, over January. Yeah. You know, to see before any construction would be uh, even considered at this point. Because I don't know that I'd want Boy Scouts down there well, with a the bridge painting. But I love the idea. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about having booms and stuff like that? Aren't you going to have to protect? You got to. Well, that would definitely have to be done. So I mean, that, it was it was something that was thrown out in a discussion. Right. So I yeah. said, we'll put it in a memo and I'll bring it to the board and. And then and we'll, we'll discuss it. Well, we please. didn't know if it was a, but it was one route. There may be other organizations that may, you know, environmental organizations or somebody else that may want to participate yeah. where they would have the capacity to, to help us and do the project at, at little or no cost to the town. I mean, in, please in one aspect or another. Let them know we appreciate their efforts and them yeah. thinking like this, and we're eager to hear, you know, other ideas and. That make one great eagle style project. Yeah, no sure. kidding. Well, it's it's it's, it's the uh, wetlands and the water that creates the problem for yeah. any contractor, and that's why some of them are shying away, because it's a very very small project. Mm -hmm. The big companies don't want to be bothered with it. We've right. had a couple of companies from out of state contact us in reference to the, the original project, and they say, "Oh no, it's only four nice. beams and a couple of closure plates." You know, we don't want to get involved with to do all the work and. You know what, what it, you know the prevailing wage scales that they have to go by it it's not you know a, a profitable uh, undertaking for them all right thank you any additional questions for the uh, I'm just curious what's the state rating on that bridge so far uh, in terms of uh, they have no no problem with it we have okay. a, a, a uh, clean bill of health since we, okay. we fixed the um, the wing walls yeah and uh, you know uh, redid the uh, approaches there's no problem. This is maintenance that yeah. we want to do to maintain the integrity of the bridge. Mm -hmm. That's correct. There's no yeah. no flagging on the bridge. There's nothing no at all. On it's, the bridge. It's, okay. it's 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 not. Yeah, a I remember problem. the wing walls were a problem. They have flagged yeah. it because of the wing walls. Okay. Any additional comments or questions? No. Thank you. And, thank you. Uh, thank you, Roger. The uh, Crawford Park, Mr. Wanick. Okay. Uh, uh, briefly, uh, you know, things at Crawford Park have slowed down. Obviously, outdoor activities are, are closed down. Our uh, outdoor pavilion uh, has been uh, shut down as well. Uh, we have con completed uh, our downstairs painting project. We uh, actually went in and uh, repainted the solarium to match the uh, main decor as well as the hallway. Um, leading into uh, the main area. Uh, so virtually the entire downstairs now is the color scheme that was selected way back when by uh, Councilwoman Collins and Councilwoman Mendocino. And, I saw uh, it tonight, actually. It looks great. It looks great in there. I'm really Yeah, really it, pleased it, with it, it pulls the whole room together yes. very nicely. It's always so and choppy. Everything was different colors, sure. different wallpaper. Sure. It looks great. And uh, yeah, the only other is. the only other comment I would make is is I'm, I'm glad that the board is uh, willing to take another look at the Crawford Park capital plan, uh, but I would suggest that if we are serious about it, we really need to bring an architect in 
and we probably should consider RFPing an architect. I agree. Uh, because uh, uh, we're talking about well over a million dollars if, in fact, that's the number. Uh, you know, just a 10 percent error rate is 100,000. Uh, so uh, uh, that's my suggestion. Well, I, I, I don't think that we need to bring in a, an architect uh, and, and, and incur, uh, you know, uh, fees for a, a million dollar project, uh, but I think that we should do uh, RFPs and try to get uh, the, best, uh, the best people on the job uh, for the projects that we're doing, uh, starting with the, uh, with the bathrooms of the pavilion. So. Anything else, uh, Mr. Nwanek? Nope. Okay. Uh, comments from the board? Yes. So tonight we had our very first um, Rye Town Sustainability meeting, uh, Committee meeting. It was more of an orientation meeting where we invited members of each of the village's boards as well as each of the village's school boards to attend at Crawford Park and it was a very successful meeting. I'd like to give special thanks to Portchester School Board President Carolee Brakewood for attending. Porchester School Board Member Bob Johnson for attending, Porchester Village Trustee Jean Ciccarelli, Rye Brook Village Trustee Jason Klein, Rye Brook School Board President Jeff Diamond, Community Representative Ashley Weldy, and unfortunately, um, despite efforts, something must have occurred with uh, Mayor Rosenblum because he was unable to attend, but I look forward to his attendance in the future. And I think it's a really exciting opportunity for all of these boards to finally work together and collaborate on something because to my knowledge a committee hasn't been formed with representation quite like this in my existence in community efforts so I'm really excited to see where it goes. Great. Excellent. Happy holidays. Mm -hmm. okay. well, I just want to wish everybody a happy Hanukkah and a Merry Christmas and enjoy your holiday season. Yeah, I'd like to thank the uh, town employees for all the hard work they've uh, accomplished this year and especially with the transition and the move to new facilities and setting that up. I know that was a lot of work and it required a lot of extra effort, so uh, thank you again for that. And I want to wish everyone out in the town of Rye a happy holiday, uh, be safe, and uh, have a prosperous new year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, I want to... Uh, I want to thank, uh, also thank the uh, town staff for their hard work over the past year. Uh, the, uh, we, we, the town of Rye has never been one uh, during my time to just sit back and let things happen. And we've uh, always challenged ourselves, we've challenged, challenged each other, and uh, I'd say over the past uh, couple of years we've also now challenged the department heads. Uh, so the paradigms that they've experienced uh, during the time that they've been here, uh, you know, we want them to, to think outside the box have, and stretch uh, because it's in that, that uncomfortable uh, position sometimes where you find the greatest growth. Uh, so when you watch us at home or sit there in the audience and you see the discussions that we're having uh, about the budget and about the, de the departments and the way the departments are run, uh, you know, we're not having these discussions because we're, we're nitpicking or we're trying to uh, eliminate something. We're trying to make sure that we're getting the best value and that we're creating the best government because the town of our residents deserve that, okay? The town of our residents deserve to have the best government representing them. And that's the reason why we're making this great investment in the assessing department uh, to, to bring that work in. Uh, that's the reason why we hired uh, Denise because we went a different route uh, to make the assessing department different. Uh, and we have this awesome vote of confidence from the uh, village of Mamaronic. If the village of Mamaronic ha had no confidence in the town of Rye that we got it right and that we can get it right for them, they would not have eliminated their assessing department. They would have said, listen, let's keep it because you know, we, make we need to uh, keep our own role and let's take care of everything in-house. Let's challenge the town of Rye. So they're not doing that. And so I think it's important that we, we all realize that. And I, I see that not necessarily as only a challenge, uh, but I see uh, this new relationship with the village of Mamaronic uh, as, as one of opportunity and uh, a great positive opportunity that we can uh, start to, uh, to work with them. And uh, I really I can't thank uh, the town staff enough for their hard work, uh, for their effort. Uh, the move this past year uh, I know was trying. I know that uh, 
Everybody was nervous, and uh, how's everything going to work out? And I'm confident by uh, January, February, definitely within the first, uh, uh, the first quarter of 2015, uh, we should be uh, flowing quite well and uh, having uh, uh, some, great, um, uh, some great successes at uh, 222. Um, I want to make sure that I, uh, I uh, congratulate uh, our staff on that because it's a lot of hard work. And uh, we do expect a lot from uh, the staff, uh, but we expect a lot because we know they have the capacity for greatness. Uh, so I want to wish everyone a uh, happy Hanukkah, uh, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. And uh, with that being said, the Chair will entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss uh, contract negotiations. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? A second it. And please call the roll. Yes. Collins? Yes. Nardi? Yes. Myers? Aye. Villanova? Yes. Carver. Okay. Mr. Noto, uh, we will not be coming back into public session? No. Okay. So, uh, Tom, you're, uh, you're uh, good to go.